Grade 5 math number 51, Divide Decimals, Rules for the Decimal Point. I'm going to do a little quick review here so that you know what I'm talking about. A power of 10 is how many times we multiply by 10. When you see 10 with the little 3 like that, the tiny 3 is an exponent, and it means 10 to the third power. It means we're going to multiply 10 to itself three times, 10 times 10 times 10. See, the little 3 is an exponent, and then the 10 would be the base, okay? So now you'll know what I'm talking about. When we increase the dividend and the divisor by the same power of 10, the quotient will stay the same. Take a look at these. We have 8 divided by 4 is 2, and if we multiply 8 times 10 to 80 and 4 times 10 to 40, 80 divided by 40 is still 2. So no matter, no matter how many times we multiply both of these by 10, because we're multiplying both of them by 10, we're increasing both of them together by the same power of 10, the quotient is going to stay the same. Same thing when we do in decimal points. So multiplying by 10, we can also multiply by tenths. 120 divided by 30 is 4. If we move the decimal point by multiplying by a tenth, we're going to move the decimal point from behind the 0 to in front of the 0, so now we have 12 divided by 3. See? The decimal point was moved from behind the 0 to in front of the 0, and it became a 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. If we multiply it by another tenth, it's going to move the decimal point another space over. So instead of 12, we've got 1 and 2 tenths. Instead of 3, we have 3 tenths, but the answer is still 4. If we multiply it by another tenth again and move the decimal point one more time, so now we have 12 hundredths, and we multiply this by a tenth and move the decimal point over to the left one more time, so we have 3 hundredths, the answer is still 4. Isn't that something? So they both are multiplied by the same amount. Okay? So if we were back here and we multiplied 8 times 100 and 4 times 100, then we would be here. But see, we multiplied them by the same thing. All right? The answer is going to be the same. Here's the other one. When the divisor has a decimal, move it right to get rid of it. So if this divisor has a decimal point in front of it, you hop it over behind it to get rid of it, so it's a regular number, but you move the decimal point the same amount in the dividend. If the decimal point is here between the 2 and 7, you now have to hop it back between the 7 and 9 because you did it to the 4, okay? The dividend gets jealous and wants as many decimal hops as the divisor got, all right? You have to remember that. You can't just hop the dividend and not the divisor. There's going to be a lot of jealousy and fighting going on, okay? And you'll get a wrong answer. Now, what happens when you hop the, de the decimal point back like two spaces to get rid of it here, so we have a 32 instead of 32 hundredths, but you only have 428 here. Well, you do the two hops, and you put zeros in to hold the places. Then the decimal point goes directly above where it is in the dividend for the quotient. See that? Same thing happened here. The decimal point goes directly above into its new spot. All right? So we can put zeros there because of my favorite rule that in math, zeros have no value, they're just placeholders, right? So we can put zeros down here to hold those two empty spaces that the hops created because we have to move the dividend the same amount of hops as the divisor, okay? What happens if there's no decimal point in the divisor but there is one in the dividend? Well, then we just leave it alone, and we just bring that decimal point straight up. But if we've got something like 22, which can't go into 4, we put a 0 there, see, to hold the place, because we're going to put 22 into 46 two times. So there would be an empty space in between the 2 and the decimal point going straight up. We put a 0 there to hold the place. They love being a placeholder. That's their job. They don't feel needed if they're not holding a place, okay? So just put a zero there, and we'll be fine. So if we did an actual decimal division problem in long division, this is what would happen. 
All right, we're going to move the decimal point right one time to get rid of it. So it gets moved over to here. All right, so it was here, so now it's over here. So what I did was I raised it straight up for the answer. It's going to go directly straight and pretty right up into the quotient. Okay, so we know where the decimal point already is in the quotient before even starting the problem. All right, and we ask ourselves, can 4 fit into 2? No, it can't. Can 4 fit into 27? Yes. How many times? 6, because 4 times 6 is 24. So we put our 6 above the 7, because we didn't put it into the 2. We put it into the 27, so it goes above the 1's place for the 27. And then we do our multiplication of 4 times 6, which is 24, and we write it down below, and then we subtract, and we get 3. Now it's the 9's turn to come down, and we ask ourselves, how many times can 4 fit into this 39? 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 9 is 36. That fits perfectly. 4 times 10 wouldn't fit here. You can't put a 10 in this place, right? So we do our 4 times 9, which is 36, and we do our subtraction. And 39 take away 36 is 3. Now what do we do? We've stopped and we've got a decimal point of 6 and 9 tenths, and we've got a 3 remainder. Well, in decimals, you can keep going by adding a 0. So we add two zeros in this particular problem to, so that we can get no remainder. We add one zero at first, and then we drop it down, and we say 4 can go into 30 how many times? 7, because 4 times 7 is 28. We do our multiplication, we write it here and subtract, and we get 2. Now we're going to add another 0 because we're going to try to get this to be an even amount so that there's no remainder. So we added our second 0, we drop it down, and look, it's perfect. 4 goes into 20 how many times? 5, and it goes in evenly. We end up with a 0 remainder, and our answer is 6 and 9 hundred and seventy five one thousandths. So this is what originally happened, okay? Let me change colors on my marker. This is the problem we had. We had two and seventy nine hundredths divided by four tenths. That was the original problem. Two and seventy nine hundredths divided by four tenths. And it ended up equaling 6 and 975 thousandths by doing long division. See that? So move the decimal point over to get rid of it, but make sure you do the same thing in the dividend because he's going to get jealous. Bring it straight up. If it creates a pocket, just add a zero, okay? And if moving it over creates empty pockets, put zeros there to hold the place. Do your division and just keep on going, okay? If it keeps on going forever and ever and ever, teachers and businesses can generally say, just stop after the second one and round up. So that 5 would tell the 7 to go up to an 8. We could just round it to 0.98 and be fine. So if it ends up going on forever and ever and ever, you can just stop and round up the third digit usually. Okay? But when you're learning, your homework might continue on that way, so you might want to go a few just to see what happens. Okay? That's how we divide decimals, and those are a couple rules for the decimal point that'll help you out when you're dividing them. We're almost finished working with decimals. I'm going to be doing fractions soon. Aren't you excited? Okay, see you next video. Bye.